Hey Interwebs, Jackie K here, and welcome to this particular week, or this particular month's Casual Pokemon Go Fireside Chat. I don't know if I have any particular topic that I don't want to save for an editorial on my own time, because I already talked a little bit about, like, my hopes and thoughts for going into 2021, so I think for this time, I'm going to take a little time to reflect back on the various events that we've had in December in 2020. Spiffly December, because if I went through all the months, that'd be way too that'd be way too long for what I want to do tonight. I just have like a little casual chat that I'm just throwing in before the actual recording session. So I want to start with ranks GBL rank six because I have some feelings on that. And depending on how long I go on that tangent, we'll see how I f feel about talking about other topics. Because, oh man, I was just like pulling up Pokemon Go Hub, trying to find like any redeeming factor for GBL this season. And I'm just, just struggling. I'm struggling to find positive things about it. Like, it's not bad, but with all the hype that was behind it, it's doesn't feel as good as past seasons. Maybe just because we went just got off the high for me personally that was like specialized cups for an entire season. And mind you, like the only review and we only have seen the first half. So who knows? This might become freaking outdated by the time I get it uploaded. So I'll just clarify now. At, this is I'm reviewing the first half of GBL. Where we had the standard Great League, and then Ultra League, and then Master League. Though my biggest criticism, I guess, feeling is not going to change. Because it's revolving around the Pokemon prize pool. Those of you who have seen me do GBL streams may have picked up on the fact that, like, um... I don't know if I would go all my ways to say that I'm a casual battle, casual player. But I'm... At least compared to other competitive players. Battlers. I'm definitely more on the casual side than the hardcore side. Like, only time I got to rank 10 in the old system was last season. But I felt, felt like majority of people that weren't just being super casual got to rank 10 for that particular season. And having all those specialized cups also helped real mo really motivate me to play. I guess what I'm trying to say is I've never really been the type of person to do all their sets every single day. In fact, I can actually, there's periods of times I can actually go without touching GBL at all. Like, I don't think I've actually touched GBL at all today. So I know, like, some of the more hardcore people are already at the higher ranks where it seems like all the good Pokemon are. I keep thinking that, and people keep telling me that. But th this part doesn't change. I'm looking at this guy now. From what I can see, this part doesn't change. So I don't think this Pokemon prize pool is actually that great. Like, it's, fa it's good for shiny hunting. That's it. I mean, thinking, reaching for straws. Shelter is good for Stardust. But most people aren't even going to remember that in terms of Pokemon. Like, it's mostly just shiny hunting and that's it. And, and for reference point, I believe I'm at rank 16. Maybe up to 17. So, like, I am, I'm, I'm almost at, like... The rank tw I'm almost at like the point where like it becomes based on rating and not just winning battles. So, so there's not much time left for the Pokemon prize pool to like, get better. Going over what I know, all the way up to rank 16, like minus the chest pin, all these Pokemon are what you see from 16 down, and the pool actually gets more and more narrow. The lower rank you are, to the point where like you, I think you start out with just like the Cantle starters, and maybe one other Pokemon, and going all the way up to rank seven, rank sixteen, it's gotten to this particular point. A nice thing that I actually overlooked was the fact that we were getting double Stardust. That's real nice. But that ends like January 4th, and 
still got like another couple months of this season. Oh, you know, I, I'm ranked 16. I can just barely see the number behind this background that's almost literally the same color. And actually, I just realized this shows up on my streaming setup better than the phone. Going through what I think I've seen going with the other rings. Once I hit 17, I'll be able to get a Fennekin. And, like, any time I do battles afterwards, I have a possibility of getting a Fennekin. Rank 18, I get a Froki. And, more importantly, you can, like, encounter it any time afterwards. Rank 20... We don't know yet. They just say you get a guaranteed encounter with a surprise Pokemon during the second half of Season 6. But also, I think it says later down in this article that Rank 20 is when legendary Pokemon start appearing in the prize pool. And I'll give more on that later. And the Legend Rank, which is... let me double check the graphic. It's pretty much the old school, it's basically what level 10 from older seasons has turned into now. I recall right, where you have to like, have the rate, where the rating system comes back. And you have to get your rating all the way to 3000. That's how you get Pikachu Libre. It's just like the old system, just pushed further back because like, it's a little bit extended overall. And it's also like... It's also where you get the end, end poles, I believe. Along that. Future poles, yeah. Let's go- Oh! The the end poles you have to just reach rank 20, which I guess is a bit promising. And the seasons. Mm, I'm just giving you to see if there's anything that would actually be able to sway my opinion. I don't exactly see it. Let's just cut to the chase. My big beef with the whole system is just in the past. There's been times I've had criticism about the Pokemon prize pool in the past. But it was always, there's always at least like one thing that was good to get from it that wasn't just Oh, all these poke this Pokemon has a chance to be shiny. Like even like stuff that I kind of like would rag in the past, like Skarmory, I would prefer from this prize pool just because, like, it's a Pokemon that's viable for GBL, and it's got a shiny chance. I know that my argument kind of falls apart with that because like you could argue that there's some of these starters like Mudkip. Mudkip has, more specifically, Swampert has. A pretty viable role in Great Ultra and maybe and even Master League. A big downside of that though is that Swampert has to have Hydro Can to really be viable, and I think like I don't even know if that was an option for Community Day if you just held on to Mudkip and involved it for the December Community Day. Let's see what else is here. Okay, I guess I, I'll admit I've been sleeping on Snowver. I've gotten a lot of use out of my Shadow Obama Snow in Great League. And normal Obama Snow is not that bad either. So I guess like because it's not as rare as the Skarmory, I was kind of sleeping on that. And like I the best part about this prize pool is Nikita just hiding in the very bottom there. I forget exactly what rank I unlocked it, but it was one that was fairly early on. And that's like the only, the one rare Pokemon that you get from this prize pool. I'm sure like it gets better when you get like higher rank. And like having the Kalo starters is kind of neat. It's kind of good if only because it's so... They've only just been introduced within the past couple months. So I guess they still have some value, especially Froki. Well, let's just pull up some candy and show you what I mean. Got myself... Like, chest pin I'm well set on, but it still has that new charm to the point where I wouldn't mind, like, getting a couple chances to get a high IV one. Fennekin, I think I have enough to fully evolve one if I really want, but 
eh, it's not terrible. Froki though, Froki. <laughs> I don't think I've transferred a Froki yet, so those three you see are the only ones I've seen since December started. I guess like I guess the other double-edged sword about the prize pool this month, this season I mean. Past seasons it was a lot more condensed, like Look at how huge this is and how, how many pages it goes down. We've definitely gotten more Pokemon in the prize pool for this particular season compared to any other season. It just kind of feels, I guess it feels more underwhelming though just because we don't have se semi-rare Pokemon in the mix like the Skarmory and... The biggest thing I'm surprised about is that Pokemon that were previously exclusive to go Battle League like the Scraffy and the Rufflet. They're nowhere to be seen. I've like skimmed this article forward and back and backwards again and seen no sign of them. I guess there might be an argument that they're trying to make it fit the season. I forgive that was specifically a, something they referenced, but you think like even if they were going for a seasonal theme that they would at least like throw Scraffy and Rufflet like behind, uh, let's say like rank, rank 16. I think that's the other thing, like it takes, as someone who's not like grinding the system out every single day, and mind you, we, I'm thinking long term, so like, imagine if we didn't get all five free sets every single time. Imagine how fr how hard it would be to get up to these higher ranks then. Like you have to, you have to actually do a whole marathon just to be, get all your, get all your Pokemon. I definitely think like they could have afforded to put some of these more special guarantee encounters lower down, a little bit lower in rank, if only to encourage players to actually ladder up. Cause so someone that's semi casual, semi hardcore, getting discouraged of just not finding anything special for so long. I can only imagine how how hardcore, how someone who's actually very casual would be. Especially with like, there's more ranks and you can climb up them about... I wouldn't... It's, it's about as easy to climb up to rank 20 as it is to climb up to... Rank like 6 or 7 in the old system. But because there's more ranks to get up to that point, even if the progression is about the same... It probably, it still feels a little bit intimidating. So, I think, like, even playing, like, even if you, like, if you really want to, like, keep Froakie in some sort of rarity system, make it a, make the first guaranteed counter with the starters a one-time thing, and then, like, once you get up to rank 16, then you can find them randomly in the Pokemon prize pool. So I'm trying to see, remember how quickly I climbed up to rank 10 and 15 and go from there. I, Cause the other thing I gotta, you gotta remember is a new thing for this prize system is like every five ranks on the fifth one they do something a little special. Like I think the first time it was just like a, all your rankings here would turn from this traditional pool of Stardust, Item, Pokemon, Rare Candy and they all would turn into the same thing which I think is a cute gimmick. Especially, but eh, I've had mixed results with it. Like, I think the first time it was just all items. And when I hit rank 10, it was all Pokemon encounters. And when I hit rank 15, it was all rare candies. Now, I'm pretty sure it's just me, but I wouldn't be honest with my feelings if I didn't point out the fact that it just feels like I get thrown, I get intentionally kind of feels a little rigged to me because every time I've done this I get thrown into higher rank players. Mind you like you just do the five battles and you're automatically ranked up to the following rank like you go from five to six win or no matter how many battles you win or lose in that bonus set. And same thing with 10 and 15 but I don't know like sometimes I felt like I was getting thrown against opponents two ranks higher and I never recall a time I was against someone of lower rank. 
So, I, it's, again, I don't think it's actually rigged, but it certainly feels that way. And I, I remind myself of this because I'm trying to figure out, like, where would be the best place to squeeze the starters? I think, like, between... Maybe between rank... Six... Between, like, rank 10 and rank 15 might be a good point. Because, like, you could hit... You could hit rank... 11 and get a chest pin encounter. 12, you get the Fennekin encounter. 13, you get the Froki encounter. And you would still have, like, two more ranks to get your Pokemon prize pool if you weren't lucky enough to, like, get those encounters on your first time through the battles. On your first set for that particular rank, I mean. And then even, even if they wanted to keep the starters the same, I think, like, one more Pokemon encounter between... A guaranteed encounter between, like, rank 5 and 10 would be nice to, even if it's just something super simple, just to like encourage the players to keep going. Like, they were giving us like Metagrosses and Pidgeots as pretty much our first guarantee encounter, and going from going from something with high Stardust to nothing besides random encounters for 15 ranks is a bit discouraging. So like even just like a high Stardust Pokemon, they're even just like a fully evolved form of the starters. I mean they're showing up in the wild as is. Like just today I found a freaking wild Blaziken just sitting here in a recording setup. While I was having lunch. It wouldn't break the game to throw as a bone like that for like a ranks a rank three encounter. As Maybe even make it a rank 6 if you're, like, really being stingy with it. But we definitely need something between rank... We definitely need something before rank 16, and I think that's the point I'm getting at. But even without that, I'm not, like, too keen on the Pokemon prize pool as is. Pulling it up again to just showcase, like... They fit a fiend, but they're, it's just lacking that spark. And who knows, maybe once I get up to rank 20 and we can see just how likely the I, how often I run into the legendary Pokemon, maybe then my opinion will change a little bit. Maybe when we get to the second half of season, season 6, something special will happen there. So in my opinion. But as it stands, I'm just a little meh. I feel like they were being too stingy with the Pokemon prizes. Like, the legendary Pokemon could... They probably could have easily gotten away with lowering the legendary Pokemon to, like, a... I, I personally would make it as low as a rank 10 reward. Like, not a guaranteed encounter, but, like, you start... It could start appearing in your Pokemon prize pool, starting from rank 10 and up. Though, I'm trying to, like, see... Imagine if that would be fair. Like, if it would break the game to have it that early. So, like, even if you make it, like, a... I think, like, it'd be a lot more cool to get a legendary Pokemon as a guaranteed encounter for rank 15 than it would be to get a set of, like, rare candies. Rare candies are cool, but, like, when I get, like, get thrown against opponents that are 10 times my level anyways, kind of takes away the excitement knowing that I won't, won't really get more than, like, two... And especially, like, let me remind you, in the normal prize pool, winning four battles of a set gets you, like, four rare candies, so... I mean, you're definitely more likely to actually get a rare candy from the set when all the prizes are a single rare candy. But with three rare candies, like, I would have to win more than half my set to make up for the same amount that I would get if I actually won a rank... Won four battles. And I, I think the big thing though is I, I can do that at any set. Meanwhile, with the whole gear 15 rank being a guaranteed rare candy thing, that only happens once. So I guess that's why, like, it kind of like takes away the hype from that when, like, anytime I just get lucky enough to win four battles, I pretty much be getting just as much 
as for my bonus set. That's kind of just how I feel about that. <laughs> they definitely have re must have in increased the odds of this freaking Froki popping up. Cause remember, like when we actually needed it for special research, and it just didn't pop up anywhere. I missed that was the first time research since the concept was introduced that I missed out on because of this stupid frog. I'm sorry. I'm gonna just I'm gonna write in this frog while I was just sitting here. That stupid Froki just <sighs> whatever. It's fine. It's just a little bit of mega energy, which I probably gone from like other field research and time events anyways. I'm not missing out on that much. Yeah. And like lowering lowering some of the guaranteed Pokemon prizes probably would just make climbing up the lower ranks more exciting, giving you the motivation to actually get up to higher ranks. It's the overall point I'm trying to get at, and also just that compared to like compared to past seasons, it just feels a little lacking to not have some more rare Pokemon sprinkled into the mix. I think like if I get up to rank 16, the world should be my oyster, and the rare stuff shouldn't be as um, there should be a couple more rare things that motivate me to keep go keep on going because I mean I have probably have a more unique perspective going into all this where a lot of competitive battles are just motivated by stardust and getting the rank to gain the number that represents their rank to tick up but for me, like, the Pokemon Prize is probably the most exciting part. Just because, like, it's a, it's a thing they actually see. It's not just, like, another number that ticks up. Like, even with Stardust, like, even though it has a practical use, there's not this particular Min Miniku that I catch. I could put a story to if I really wanted to. The 125 Stardust I got from catching it. It's just getting an advantage, and I'm never going to think about it again. So, hopefully they like do some things to improve that. Going into Season 7, maybe even the second half of Season 6. Who knows what they really got in store for that second half. And uh huh, that's the 20 minute pack of that in of itself. I was going to, I was can again... If I didn't spend too long rambling on the Pokemon GBL thing, I was going to talk about some other events that happened in December, but... Yeah, here we are. Maybe I could, like, breeze through the ones that had come to the top of my mind. I kind of have an similar boat that a lot of people were with December Community Day. Where, like, it was ki it kind of sucked that we couldn't involve all Pokemon from all Community Days to get their second move. I get that there would be complicated things like Charmander, because it had one for this season, or for this year, and then one back when it was this community day first came around. I wouldn't, I would have been okay, I personally would have been okay with them just like making that specific example for Charmander. As much as it would suck because of how good Blastburn is, and how, how most people would prefer to actually get Blastburn and Dragon Breath. But even with, I would have taken that over not having access to anything from those older seasons. Because there's, I did evolve a few things that I've been holding on to from those community days, but like this Shadow Bulbasaur, I don't know if I can like show it on screen because I don't remember exactly where I caught it. And I mean, but that's why I have this button. Yeah, like it's. I mean, I would have preferred it to have an attack, one of those other two stats to be the attack. But I just think like it's, it's been, for a raiding Pokemon, that's pretty good. And I was looking forward to evolving it. And I know, I know. Before anyone says anything, we are going to get an event sometime in 2021 that that will allow us to get the humiliated move for those particular Pokemon. But 
they weren't clear about it, so I'm just assuming that it's, that it's going to be so far away that it might as well be never. Especially because they haven't announced it yet, and they got all these other events lined up. They kind of just like make me feel even more doubtful that it's going to be any time in the next couple months. Uh, like, I wouldn't be surprised with something they say for the back half of 2021. Well, that's my thoughts on that. December, the, from what I can recall, the December event was fine. It was nice. They always do a good job with the December event, though. I guess I could, like, I haven't really sh talked about my shinies at all from the past few events. And it feels like December was pretty nice to me. Between, like, the Safari, the jungle event, like, finally gave myself a shiny Wu Bat. And yeah, that's two shiny Pikachus in a row. I would prefer, I personally would have preferred a shiny Pikachu from that ex jungle event and then one from the Christmas event, or it'd be a little more balanced. But ah, in, an in a hypothetical world, I could just trade one of these to get the other one, hypothetically. Finally got that shiny alone Vulpix. Now that's one I was hunting for a little bit. Like, I remember, still remember when they were in field research. And not having luck getting them there. And I think I got this like right in the end of the December event. Or the Christmas event. Uh, shiny beautiful Snowbird. Unfortunately the IVs aren't great. But I mean like it's a shiny. Yeah. Just having a sparkle. It's pretty lucky in itself. And I can't remember if I transferred any of these from the December community day yet. But this is like Hall at the very least. I think like Shiny Weedle was the only shiny they didn't catch a single one of throughout the entire time frame, which kind of stinks. <laughs> but it's what it is. And I'm, I still have fond memories of that Whooper event for the Game Awards. I I have picked up from other parts of the internet that a lot of people didn't actually like it just because I'll admit the rate, the rate was low. Obviously, we've had two shiny whoopers. It's kind of hard not to imagine that it was normal odds. But then I just like hear people going like, "Oh, I went out and grinded an entire night trying to find rockets and couldn't find anything. No balloons, no shiny whoopers, and I walked and grinded an entire night." And I'm sorry. I'm just thinking as people are saying that, going, "Dude, you do realize that this is an event." specifically tailored for us to sit on our couch while watching the Game Awards and just pop it incense and watch the bloopers come in, right? This what this event wasn't designed around going out and actually walking. Which feels weird to say because it's Pokemon Go, of course you want to go out and walk. And there are legitimate criticisms that I understand from that event, like rocket balloons were ridiculous. I was rebooting my game so many times because I was convinced that the reason the rockets weren't coming was because something was busted on the game on my end. Now, I only recall like two. I mean, two was enough for me just to have the Shadow Whooper for the collection, but I'll admit, like, if I didn't have the good luck I did with the Shining Whooper, I'll admit my opinion of that event might have been a little different. But I was also live streaming it and having fun playing Pokemon Go while watching the Game Awards, so I kind of like. Enhance the experience for myself, so I'll, I'll admit like I have a little bias, but I like that event. I mean, since I'm scrolling through my shinies, is there any other s stories that kind of like triggered? It's nice to actually finally like complete the Nidoran line. I got I was lucky enough to get the shiny Nidoran female, I believe. A long time ago, but I was still looking for the Nidoran male. So I'm happy to do that. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure this one wasn't at the same time frame as the research day. So that was nice. And actually, I think the Nidorans were from November, so that was all my shinies from this particular month. So, I, I feel like December wasn't nice. The events were fun. I, I forget exactly which events come from what time frame. And thanks for the foul. But again, I forget what events came from which time frames. 
But I think I had a good time with Pokemon Go, regardless of that. And that's all I got for this particular talk. So I'm going to end the Pokemon Go Fireside Chat here. But I think like if I can get the setup without breaking too much, we'll jump over to Let's Go Eevee and I'll record an episode or two of that. I just figured I'd record a podcast before I got started on that to warm up my commentary. Then to make myself feel better for not recording any podcasts yesterday. So, for all you listening in, in the future, take care. <laughs>